welcome, welcome. Good to see you all here for our Torah study. Uh, tonight we have Tetzaba, which is command. And um, so this is uh, going to go through some more of the information that's given to us uh, regarding the temple, the tabernacle, uh, rather the tabernacle, uh, some of the um, construction of it, and um, also some of the information about the priestly office. Remember that at this time, um, we are uh, just after the, uh, we're just uh, after what happened with the uh, golden calf, uh, and we have covered uh, the Exodus, and uh, now here they are at the mountain, and they're establishing the, the faith. And so um, that is uh, kind of kind of the context where we're at here. So uh, like we normally do, we'll uh, just read down through here. And, and then if we have any comments or anything, uh, uh, you know, people can speak up. But uh, so this is Tetzaba. Commands. It means commands. So uh, and, and remember, the, the, the name of the portion is in the uh, first, usually the first line of the portion. So that as, as we normally see, uh, and you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. And the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before Yahweh. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel. Uh, okay, and so let's let's finish up. Uh, let's let's do twenty eight too, and then we'll you know we'll open it for comments. And you shall take unto you Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, Itamar, Aaron's sons. Aaron had a lot of sons, didn't he? And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. And you shall speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, a, a breastplate an ephod, and a robe, a broidered coat, a miter, and a girdle. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of, of blue, of purple, of scarlet, fine twine linen with cunning work. It shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof. So it shall be joined together. And the curious girdle of the ephod upon which is upon it shall be of the same according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. And you shall take two onyx stones, engrave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on one stone, and the other six names of the rest on the other stone, according to their birth, with the work of an engraver in the stone, like the engravings of a signet. You shall engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. You shall make them to be set in uh, ouches of gold. And you shall put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod of stone of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before Yahweh upon his two shoulders for a memorial. And you shall make ouches of gold and two chains of pure gold at the end of wreathen work. Shall you make them and fasten the wreathen chains to the ouches. And you shall make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work upon the work of the ephod. You shall make it of gold, of blue, of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen. Shall you make it? Four score, it shall be uh, being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. And you shall set it in a setting of stones, even four rows of stones. And four rows shall be a sardis, topaz, carbuncle. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a barrel, an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosings. And the stones shall be the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, 
Every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes, and you shall make upon the breastplate chains at the end of wreathen work of pure gold, and you shall make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and you shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate, and you shall put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate. And the other two ends of the two wreathen chains you shall fasten in two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And you shall make two rings of gold and you shall put them upon the two ends of the breastplate in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod, ephod inward. And two other rings of gold, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, you shall make and shall put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the forepart thereof over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the ephod, and they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof under the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, and it shall be above the curious girdle of the ephod, and that the breastplate be not loosened from the ephod. Now, uh, uh, we're, I'll see if I can come up with a picture here, because uh, there's a lot of verbiage here, which is descriptive of these um, holy garments that the high priest was to wear, that being Aaron. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel and the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goes in unto the holy place for a memorial before Yahweh continually. And you shall put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Tumim. The Urim and the Tumim. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goes in before Yahweh. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before Yahweh continually. And you shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue, and there shall be a hole in the top of it, and the midst thereof it shall be, it shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were the whole of a habard, uh, let's see, habergen, that it not be rent. And beneath upon the hem of it you shall make pomegranates of blue, of purple, of scarlet round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between. Uh, them round about, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. Now, the bells reputedly uh, were so that people outside could hear him moving around in the Holy of Holies. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before Yahweh, and when he comes out, that he die not. And you shall make a plate of pure gold, engrave upon it like the engravings of a signet, holiness to Yahweh. And you shall put it on the blue lace, that it may be upon the mitre. Upon the forehead of the mitre it shall be. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things, which the children of Israel shall hollow in all their holy gifts. And it shall always be upon his forehead, that they may accept, they may be accepted before Yahweh. And you shall embroider the coat of fine linen, and you shall make the mitre of fine linen, and you shall make the girdle of needlework. And for Aaron's sons, you shall make coats, and you shall make them girdles and bonnets shall you make for them for glory and for beauty. And you shall put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him, and shall anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And you shall make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins, even unto the thighs they shall reach. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come into the tabernacle of congregation or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place that they bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statue forever unto him and his seed after him. So let's let's see if we can get a... Uh, you see the bells here? You see the pomegranates? Uh, it's kind of an artist rendition. Now he has this breastplate and notice it was talking about this golden chain. And up here we have the, uh, this might be the Urim and the Tumim here on each shoulder. Um, and then each of these uh, stones in the breastplate, there's 12 of them, would have the names of the children of Israel. Okay, uh, so any thoughts on that? There's a lot of, a lot of verbiage, like I said. Um, I don't know if you'd heard about it, but some years ago, some archaeologists found what they think is one of those golden bells. Really? Huh. Yeah, they were doing some um, excavating work in the area of the temple, or the temple mount, rather, mm -hmm. and they came across that. 
Wow. Looks like Dennis has got his hand up. Go ahead, Dennis. We'll get you unmuted here. The garments became holy next to the children of Israel, that they had made those garments to be holy next to Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah, they were consecrated unto Yahweh, and it was Yahweh and the power of Yahweh that set them apart. Uh, that's a good comment there. Um, and... Um, This is now some people would think this is a dry section of scripture because there's so many, uh, you know, it's it's so descriptive of all the all the things. But, you know, when you see a picture, it, it really brings it together. Uh, and. Um, uh, it's uh, there's a lot of detail that went into this and it was no slouchy garment. This was a beautiful garment and it took some very special skills and abilities to put this stuff together. In fact, I think it was a holy of son of a Hesomach who was tasked with making the clothing part of it. But the the gold and metal working uh might have been Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, her as mentioned, uh he did the cunning metal work. Now, as far as the gemstone stuff, um uh, I don't know if that that probably would have would have, would have gone under uh, what Bezalel did possibly. Uh, But it was a beautiful thing. Twelve different gemstones, you know. Uh, Brother James, you got your hand up there, brother. Go ahead. There we go. Yeah, I've uh, I've always been curious about the uh, the engraving on these stones, because if you look at the size of them stones, um. And it had to been engraved on the back side in order for it to shine through the stone. These are, uh, I think they're all translucent stones. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, it's, I'm curious as how, how they actually engraved them. Because some of these stones are very hard. A diamond, uh, that's a very hard stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of wonder if, uh, you know, the way the sun hit it, if if the names would have been, you know, if it would have brought that, that out more distinctly or something, uh, you know. All right, uh, so Exodus 29, uh, so uh, we got some other things here. And this is the thing that you should do unto them to hollow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, and cakes unleavened, tempered with oil, wafers unleavened, anointed with oil of wheat and flour, shall you make them. And you shall put them into one basket, and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams, and Aaron and his sons. And you shall bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall wash them with water, and you shall take the garments, and put upon Aaron the coat, and the robe of the ephod, and the ephod and the breastplate, and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod, and you shall put the mitre upon his head, and put the holy crown upon the mitre. Then uh, you shall take the anointing oil, and pour it upon his head, and anoint him. And you shall bring his sons and his coats upon them, and you shall gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. You shall consecrate Aaron and his sons, and you shall cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation, and Aaron and his sons shall put their head, hands upon the head of the bullock, and you shall kill the bullock before Yahweh by the door of the congregation of the tabernacle, and you shall take the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with your finger, and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar, and you shall take all the fat that covereth the inwards and the call that is above the liver, the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, and burn them upon the altar. But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shall you burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. You shall also take one ram, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram, and you shall slay the ram. You shall take his blood and sprinkle it round about the altar, and you shall 
cut the ram in pieces and wash the inward of him and his legs and put them unto his pieces and unto his head. And you shall burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto Yahweh. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And you shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Uh, then you shall kill the ram and take of his blood and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron. Now much has been made of this here, the right ear. And upon the tip of the right ear of his sons, and upon the thumb of their right hand, and upon the great toe of the right foot, and sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. And you shall take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil, and sprinkle it upon Aaron and upon his garments, upon his sons, and upon the garments of his sons with him. And he shall be hallowed in his garments and his sons, and his sons' garments with him. And you shall take of the ram the fat of the rump, and the, and the fat that covereth the inwards, and call above the liver, and two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and the water, uh, and the right shoulder, rather, for it is a ram of consecration. And one loaf of bread, and one cake of oil bread, and one wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread of this before Yahweh. And you shall put all in the hands of Aaron, and the hands of his sons, and you shall weigh them for a wave offering before Yahweh. And you shall receive them of their hands, and burn them on the altar for a burnt offering for a sweet savor before Yahweh. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And you shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's consecration and wave it for a wave offering before Yahweh, and it shall be your part. And you shall sanctify the breast of the wave offering and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved and which is heaved up, and of the ram of the consecration, even of that which is for Aaron, of that which is for his sons. And it shall be Aaron and his sons by statute forever. From the children of Israel, for it is a heave offering, and it shall be a heave offering. From the children of Israel, of the sacrifice of their peace offerings, even their heave offering unto Yahweh. And the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons after him, be, to be anointed therein, to be consecrated in them. And that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days, when he comes into the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place. And you shall take the ram of the consecration and seethe his flesh in the holy place. And Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And you shall eat those things wherein the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. And if aught of the flesh of the consecrations or of the bread remain into the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten because it is holy. And you, uh, and thus you shall do unto Aaron and to his sons according to all the things which I have commanded you. Seven days shall you consecrate them, and you shall offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement, and you shall cleanse the altar. When you have made atonement for it, you shall anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days uh, you shall make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. Now this is that which you shall offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year by day continually. Huh. One lamb uh, you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb, lamb you shall offer in the evening time. And with the one lamb, a tenth a deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hen and beaten oil, and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb shall you offer at even, and shall do thereunto according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof, for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before Yahweh where I will meet you to speak there unto you. Interesting. So that's going to be the door of the tabernacle of the congregation where Yahweh will meet and speak with them there. And there I will meet with the children of Israel and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. So it's probably a glory cloud that would come down. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office and I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their Elohim. And they shall know that I am Yahweh their Elohim that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt that I might dwell among them. I am Yahweh their Elohim. Okay, a lot more there uh, regarding um, 
you know, the sacrifices, but you notice that it's two lambs in the morning, two lambs at night. Interesting. And it says uh, of the first year, day by day. So think about that. That's four lambs per day that's being sacrificed on that altar. Uh, and then at the end here, it says, And they shall know that I am Yahweh their Elohim that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them. I am Yahweh their Elohim. All right. Uh, not too much to comment on there, I don't think, other than it's just your sacrifices. All right, let's go to Exodus 31 through 10. Now, this here is interesting because this is now talking about the furniture. And you shall make an altar to burn incense upon. Of shittim wood shall you make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four score shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, and the top thereof, the sides thereof, round about, and the horns thereof, and you shall make it unto a crown of gold round about. And the two golden rings shall you make it under the crown of it. By the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it, shall you make it. And they shall be for places for the stabs to bear it withal. So it uh, this was all very mobile furniture. They would have gold rings in it. They would put the stabs through, and they could carry this wherever they went. And you shall make the stabs of shittim wood, overlay them with gold, and you shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. So that's where probably the high priest, where Yahweh would meet him, would be the mercy seat over the testimony. Uh, and Aaron shall burn there in sweet incense every morning. When he dresses the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lights the lamps at evening time, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before Yahweh throughout your generations. You shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall you pour drink offerings upon thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once a year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto Yahweh. So that must be the uh, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, where he would uh, put, uh, make an atonement upon the horns of it. All right. All right. So that is, that's the Torah portion. And uh, Tetzibah is, uh, you shall command, uh, and that's what they are, commands. Uh, go ahead, brother. Yeah, have you ever considered the gold rings and the weight that they're carrying? Mm -hmm. Now consider how soft gold is. How did they treat those rings so that they did not stretch and tear apart? Yeah, that's a good... That's a good uh, uh, thought there uh, and what i'm wondering is for some of it like that would be load bearing like that i wonder if they would mix it with something to maybe strengthen it uh or was it truly just pure gold because gold is very heavy but it's not very strong right it's soft uh, it's very soft unless there was some kind of a way that they could temper it that we do not understand or know of anymore Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something I've really considered, that, that they had some way that they knew how to temper that that gold. Yeah. A lot of mysterious stuff here. There's, you know, here we are. This was, were thousands of years removed. And, uh, you know, there's more questions than answers. I mean, yes, we still have this preserved, even in our generation. But it's at, you know, there's even been um, dispute as to what the shape of the tabernacle was like. Was it like a teepee? Was it 
like like oblong, kind of like a rectangle shape, like like traditionally is what I was taught, it was kind of like a rectangle, you know. Um so it's hard to know. Um it sure would have been something to see, don't you think? With all those animals that they would have to have penned up. And because if they're doing four lambs a, a day, you gotta have a lot of lambs. <laughs> Well, have you ever considered how much wine they went through? Yeah. And where did that wine come from? Yeah, good. good because point. wine will go stale over over time. So it, they didn't have all that wine the whole 40 years. The only thing I'm wondering is, is it possible that, I mean, were they trading for some of the stuff? Uh, you know, you wonder about that. Um I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't trust anything from an outsider to go into the temple. That's probably true. So they must have had their own somehow. Well, that's another thing I've wondered. If they were in certain spots long enough where they could actually plant grapevines and would come back during the harvest time to that spot and harvest it so that they would have the juice for the wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, so that's the tour portion. Let's see if we can. Okay, so this next part is Ezekiel. Uh, and so uh, probably what this is going to be is it's going to parallel. Uh, it's going to parallel the tabernacle in some way. So this is Ezekiel chapter 43, 10 through 27. You son of man, show the house, uh, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. Okay, so in the days of Ezekiel, uh, we have an idolatrous uh, nation, which is not supposed to be idolatrous, but they were, and they were even polluting the temple. Uh, and if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the goings in thereof, and all the forms thereof. And all the ordinances, ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in uh, their sight, that they may keep the whole form thereof, and all the ordinance, ordinances thereof, to do them. This is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. And these are the measures of the altars after the cubits, the cubit is a cubit and a hand breadth, even the bottom shall be a cubit and a hand breadth, and, and the breadth a cubit, and the border thereof by the edge uh, thereof round about shall be a span, and this shall be the higher place of the altar. And from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle shall be two cubits, and the breadth one cubit, and from the lesser settle even to the greater settle shall be four cubits, and the breadth one cubit. So the altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar and upward shall be four horns. So I think we learned about the altar, didn't we? Where it had four horns and it was overlaid with gold. And the altar should be twelve cubits long and twelve broad, square in the uh, square in the four squares thereof. And the settle shall be fourteen cubits long, fourteen broad, and the four squares thereof. And of the border upon it shall be a half cubit, and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about. And uh, his stairs shall look toward the east. Now, that's an interesting statement. And his stairs shall look toward the east. And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith sovereign Yahweh, these are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle the blood thereon. And you shall give to the priests of the Levites that be of the seed of Zadok. Notice this. They were already breaking this by the time of Herod. And even before that, in the Maccabean period, uh, which appeared unto me to minister unto me, saith Sovereign Yahweh, a young bullock for a sin offering, and you shall take the blood thereof and put it on the four horns of it and on the four corners of the settle and upon the border round about. Thus shall you cleanse and purge it. Uh, you shall take the bullock also of the sin offering and you shall burn it on the appointed place of the house within the sanctuary. And on the second day, you shall offer a kid of the goats without blemish for a sin offering and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with bullock. And you shall make an end of cleansing it, and you shall offer a young bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And you shall offer them before Yahweh, and the priest shall 
cast salt upon them, and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto Yahweh. Seven days shall you prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. That's an interesting one. Every uh, seven days you will prepare a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. Now notice this without blemish. You're not supposed to take your, you know, your second string animals, <laughs> to use a sports term, or even third string. You're supposed to use the best of the best. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forward, the priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, saith the sovereign Yahweh. Now, isn't that something? And, you know, all of this, uh, they went through all of this. And uh, just imagine, I mean, uh, but, it, but it underscores the seriousness of sin that had to be atoned for. And all of these animals lost their lives uh, because of this. Really is quite a, quite a statement, you know. All right, uh, let's see here. I will finish up with Matthew. Uh, okay, so somehow this will apply. We we uh, the first part of the Torah portion. We talked about the high priest garments. We talked about the various types of. Um, sacrifices and all these animals and then we talked about the uh the the, the uh, incense altar uh or the burn burn off burn offering altar maybe uh with the horns on it okay so here's the new testament uh matthew 5 13 through 20 starts out here now this is yeshua speaking you are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all that are in the house. You know what? When this says candlestick, I wonder if he was actually saying menorah. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And that actually, that fulfill word means to bring it within its context of how the Messiah and its perfect interpretation. It was, he was, magnifying it in such a way that it could not be uh, in, in, in the understanding of Messiah. He was actually bringing it out in its proper way, its proper manner. We know this because he continues on, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle. Now the jot and tittle is kind of like the yod and the, uh, Oh, what's the other one? But it's it's a very small punctuation mark. So even the punctuation marks shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Well, what is the all that has to be fulfilled? Yeshua back in the kingdom. And uh, we are in the, um, and maybe it, what it means is till all be fulfilled could be, have to do with the eighth day, which would be eternity. Uh, whosoever shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, this is uh, this is an interesting one here. It shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So if you're even doing the least of them, I guess that gives you higher status in heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, 
you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, how could he say this? You know, churchianity likes to say, oh, the scribes and the Pharisees, they were keeping the law. But they would do horrible things like uh, the law says you should do your best to help your parents when they are old and, and help take care of them. Well, what were the scribes doing the, and the Pharisees? They were saying you can take your money that was you were saving up for them. Give it to us. It'll be in good hands and we'll call it Corban. We'll, we will release you from your oath to take from from your uh, in other words your responsibility to take look after your mother and father when they're old so uh it's not you don't have to stretch very high to get above the morality of the scribes and the pharisees do you i don't think you know uh you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven so if you don't <laughs> if you're if you're doing things like that, then how could you enter the kingdom of heaven, you know? Uh, so that's, uh, and that, that scripture also underscores the fact that the Torah is still relevant today. And how else do we know this? I mean, how else could it be that Sukkot would be in full force when Yeshua returns? We know this by uh, Zechariah chapter 14. So, I mean, it's clear all throughout. And then in Isaiah 66, it literally says that, uh, you know, though those who are making, um, they're, it's like these idolaters uh, and who eat swine flesh and so on, it says you'll, they shall be consumed together, saith Yahweh. That's pretty scary, uh, especially for swine flesh eaters, you know. Uh, and I've never understood, I mean, it must be that most church people just don't read that, and maybe they don't understand the context, or they just somehow believe that, that Paul was able to undo all that. I mean, that was literally a prophetic utterance. And Paul said himself that many of the things he wrote were his opinion for a particular time, and, and on top of the fact that Paul was greatly misunderstood anyway, you know, and his letters were misused, so... I think it's pretty clear. I think we're on the right path to be studying all of what Scripture says and applying what we can apply. And if that means the Sabbath, if that means we should not be eating things that he doesn't want us to eat, then so be it. And actually, I think we're all the better for it. Uh, you'll definitely be healthier, uh, by and large. Uh, so... That's a good. Uh, that's a good uh, section there. What do you think about that, brother James? Any last comments before we close? Got to get your mic on here. There you go. Ah, uh, we're still we're still muted. What's going on here? There you How's go. That? Okay. Now I'm real pleased with this last reading because this is one of my favorite script uh verses and scriptures because it's it comes right straight from the mashiach's mouth and it testifies that until heaven and earth pass away the law the torah is in force and how the churches can pass over that and not understand it is beyond me even if they even if they could twist paul's words to to say the opposite this is the Mashiach himself speaking, not Paul, not one of the apostles. <clears throat> and it just, it, it amazes me that, that people can, can read this and not understand how Torah is still in effect. Yeah, absolutely right. Dennis, you got your hand up, buddy. What you got to say? <clears throat> the, the dietary... Things are very much in focus that it, we have to follow them based on the commandments itself. Mm -hmm. The commandments itself says not to eat certain animals, mm -hmm. like crustaceans and things like that. Yeah. And it, it he, he told the Israelites back in the day, he said, "I will put none of these diseases so that I, I, put, I, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I afflicted the Egyptians with." 
And uh, so uh, yeah, I, I, believe, I believe it. I mean, the children of Israel, if they were keeping those, um, you know, they were, they were getting healthier. Uh, and they had come out of a very polluted environment, too. You know, America's a very polluted environment. Even if you are eating clean, they're doing every which way they can to make our food bad. Right. They're, they're pumping our um, beef cattle full of hormones. They are uh, spraying the grass that our beef cattle, uh, you know, the, they're putting herbicide and pesticide out there. Uh, they are um, even, even as bad, even they're even doing things like mixing DNA of plants and messing around with the genetic profile, you know, like this GMO mm -hmm. stuff, uh, you yeah. know, um, so there's a lot of hidden dangers out there, but our heavenly father gives us a template. Uh, and we can ask, we can pray and ask for wisdom, uh, you know, on how to avoid. Right. I, I, I think the kosher food is, is good to have, <laughs> you know, it's good to have things that are kosher made that follow those dietary requirements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this is Tetzava. This is the, the command, uh, you shall command. And um I think we're gonna cover more of the of the tabernacle furniture in the next time around. I think so. Because it'll go into some of the other stuff. I, I don't think we covered the ark yet. It didn't describe the ark yet. Uh unless I'm wrong. I don't think we've gone past that yet, but Anyway, uh, all right, guys. Uh, Y'all bless you. Have a great night. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be there tomorrow. I'm 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 debating because the Seven Day Adventist Church. I mean, not tomorrow, but Shabbat. The seven. What I'm saying is the Seven Day Adventist Church. They've got this display. It's a it's a tabernacle display. Thing is, their church starts right when the Yahad thing starts. And I've been wanting to find out about that, uh, you know, and 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 see what's going on over there. Uh, and so uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'll be there or not. If I am, I am. If I'm not, you'll know why. Because uh, I want to see that tabernacle display. Uh, so um, anyway. Um, if it's anything like the one they have up here in, just north of Waldron, they have that tabernacle set up outside and uh, because one year I I forget where we were at, but uh, I think it was when we was coming back from uh, from Jackson from Jack's house, I stopped in there and actually they actually let us walk through it, and they had someone describing. So it may be that they have that set up for the entire day. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. So. All right. Uh, Y'all bless you, Dennis. May the Almighty help you, you. strengthen you, and uh, we'll keep we'll keep you in our prayers. And um, Y'all willing, we'll we'll see each other again. Mm -hmm.